Thank you, Titus. Yep. All right, turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Hopefully you're all awake. I don't know how many of you stayed up for the new year. I didn't stay up. I went to bed, and uh, I have hopefully I'm alert now. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 4. And before we go into that, in life there's different moments throughout life that causes us to reflect maybe on our past and to think about what we've done, maybe the accomplishments that we've had in our past, maybe the things, that struggles that we've had in our past, and there's different moments that cause us to focus on the future. It could be sometimes maybe at a birthday, or you begin to reflect upon your past year and your past whatever age it was that you were at, and you begin to make preparations for the future, or maybe at an anniversary or a wedding, or different times that causes us to reflect you know, and New Year's is one of those days as well. And we often are very familiar with New Year's resolutions and times that we slow down and we think, okay, what do I want to accomplish in this new year? What is it that I want to, maybe things I haven't accomplished in the past, but what is it I want to accomplish this year? But it also causes us in New Year's, causes us to reflect on this past year, maybe the past, past 2016 what was it that I accomplished this past year? What were maybe some of the trials, maybe some of the struggles that you've gone through, maybe some of the victories? It could have been a great year for you, or it could have been a, a trying year. Or it could, have been a, it could have been a year that you look back and say, you know what, I wish I could redo it. Or it could have been a year that we look back and say, you know what, I don't have any regrets. This past year, it could have been maybe financially you did really well, or financially it wasn't a greatest year. Or maybe you're struggling with maybe some sicknesses or relationship issues. Or you could say, you know, all those areas, they were great years in all those different categories. But now, spiritually speaking, how would you say that 2016 was for you? Would you say, would you look back at 2016 and say, you know what, I wish I had changed some things. I wish I had done some things differently. Or would you say, it was, it was a so-so year. Or would you say, you look back and say, you know, I don't have any regrets. I know that I live for the Lord to my utmost ability. I serve the Lord to the best of my ability. And, and if that's the case, that's great. And that's what we want to move into 2017. We don't want to look at our accomplishments, accomplishments in 2016 and say, you know, those are good enough. And let's just coast in 2017. No, we want to look back whether we have regrets or whether we don't have regrets. The thing is, 2016 is in the past now. We can't go back. We can't change it. But, you know, what we can do now is look forward to 2017 and, and seek the Lord's face. So, Lord, what do you want me to do in this new year? We can't go back, but we can look to the future. So, spiritually speaking, how would you say, how would you rate 2016? And as you reflect upon that one year, but I'd like to briefly speak to you about a man who didn't just reflect on just one year of his life. He didn't just reflect upon a couple years of his life. But he looked back at his entire life and said, you know what, I have no regrets. I have no regrets in how I lived my life. And that is my desire for my life. I want to be able to look back at my life and say, you know what, I have no regrets. You know, all the financial or business or relationship, those are all good, but there's one important thing that if we truly want to look at back at our life, at the end of our life, we want to be able to say what the Apostle Paul was able to say in 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 through 8. It says, I've, in verse 6 it says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Paul was able to look back at his life and said, you know what, this, the life that I live is a life, is a well-lived life. Now, are you able to look back at 2016 and say, you know what, that was an incredible year, spiritually speaking. I live for the Lord. And you know what, 
in order for us to have a life that is well lived, you know, we need to have a year that's well lived. We need to have a month that's well lived, a week. And it all it boils down to moment by moment decisions and choices that we make throughout the day, throughout the week throughout the month and throughout the year in order for us to be able to be like the Apostle Paul and look back at the end of our life and be able to say, I have fought a good fight, I have finished the course, and I have kept the faith. It takes moment by moment decisions. And, and as we venture into 2017, we ought to be realizing that it, it is moment by moment decisions. I want to point out three different points here. First of all, the, there is a fight to be fought. There's a course that we ought to run, and there's a faith to be kept, the fight to be fought. In order for us to be like Apostle Paul and look back and say, no, I have no regrets, we have to first of all realize the fight that we are in. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, we are in a battle, and it doesn't take long for us to look around at this world, and we see the choices that this world is making, and it doesn't take long for us to realize that there is a spiritual warfare that goes on, that is going on. And there may be times, though, in our life that maybe we are carnally, we are carnally minded, and we, like, we don't really realize and we don't recognize that spiritual warfare Oftentimes we're maybe all the way off on the sidelines. We aren't actually engaged in the fight. But Paul, as we look at his life, he was actively engaged in the spiritual warfare. He recognized, he realized that there is a spiritual warfare that is going on. You know, the devil doesn't need to attack those who are carnally minded. You know, honestly, we have enough to deal with on our flesh. Oftentimes the devil's like, well, you know, they aren't doing, they're actually hindering the work of God. And so there may be not as much spiritual attack. But those who t t truly want to live the Lord, there's going to be spiritual attack. And sadly speaking, a lot of Christians like, you know, I don't, I don't really want to face that spiritual attack. So I'm just going to sit off the sideline. I'm just going to cower over here and just live my life how I want to live it. But yet if we are going to be... Um, a soldier of Christ, if we're going to fight the fight, we have to realize there is a battle and we're fighting a, a powerful enemy. You know, he's not just a novice. He's not just someone who just, you know, was born the other day, but the devil has been around for before this world began. He knows how to be able to attack. He knows the angles in which to attack. And he knows when we put our guard down and when to attack. And we have to be realizing that we are fighting um, a powerful, powerful enemy. Not only are we to recognize it, but we are to prepare for this fight. You know, do you have the armor of the Lord in your life? In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. How can we expect to be engaged in this spiritual warfare without proper preparation? How can you expect in 2017 to have a year that you gain spiritual ground in your life if we are not equipped with, with a spirit proper preparation. Any other area in our life, we recognize the importance of preparation, but somehow we miss it in our spiritual fight. How is that the case? Whether it's, a, you know, if you're doing a boxing match and if there's, you're preparing for a boxing match, you obviously prepare for that. You exercise. If you're going for sports, basketball, volleyball, any other sport, you prepare for it. You exercise. You discipline your body. And that is the same way, spiritually speaking, and we may not recognize as much because we don't visually see it. We don't visually see, may with our physical eyes, but if we are spiritually in tune with the Lord and if we're spiritually walking with the Lord, we're going to recognize it with our spiritual eyes that there is a battle to be engaged in and we ought to be prepared for this battle. Do you desire to be effective in the spiritual warfare? Do you desire that the Lord can use you? Well, then we need to prepare not only in this fight are we to be recognizing and preparing it, but also we ought to be engaging in this fight. And too many Christians do not want to be engaged because they realize that there is oftentimes um, repercussions that go along with that. There may be some pain that you're going to have to endure. We could just look at the Apostle Paul's life in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 23 through 27. It begins to talk about some of the things that he endured as a soldier of Jesus Christ. 
and says, And they ministers of Christ, I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant in stripes, above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths often. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils of the wilderness, in perils in the sea. And he continues to go on in weariness and painfulness. And he begins to list all the things that he had to face in his life. You know, if we're going to actually be engaged in spiritual warfare, we have to realize that there's going to be things in our, going to come in our life that, you know what, we aren't going to really enjoy, but that is a part of being engaged in the fight. Paul had to suffer in this fight, but yet he was able to look back at his life and say, you know, I have fought a good fight. There may be difficulties in, lo- in the fight, but no question about it, there will be. But are you willing to suffer and push through and endure for the sake of Christ? You know, we can't be engaged if we're just closing our eyes and hoping it goes away, the spiritual warfare goes away. We can't just ignore it. We can't coward, but we have to be actively engaged in it. We can't fight our own strength, though no matter how strong a guy we may think that we are, I'm just thinking there's a lot of sickness going around. We can't fight this spiritual warfare in our own power. But just with that little bit of sickness, you know, it doesn't take much for someone to be sick. Doesn't, and all of a sudden their body is weak. It just takes a little microscopic little germ that just gets in your body and someone who's extremely strong and powerful and healthy and all that, just that little germ makes them one of the weakest people. And we can't engage this spiritual warfare in our own strength. We have to realize that in order for us to be engaged in this warfare, we have to realize that we need the grace of God and we need the power of God. Not only are we to be engaged in this fight, but we ought to continue is a process of continuing to endure. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You know, we must endure. We must push through. We must continue, whether it's painful, whether it's, it's good times or bad times, we must continue to endure in this fight that we are to be engaged in. There's no days off, there's no vacation times. You know, and there may be some reprieve sometimes from spiritual attack in our life. But oftentimes during those, those, those reprieves of, you know, it, it doesn't seem as much spiritual attack, we often let our guard down and it doesn't take long because when, until the devil begins to attack because we've let our guard down. We're like, okay, well, I don't think there's as much attack and we let our guard down, that's when the devil comes in from the behind. I think of the verse, if a man thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. We must endure. We must continue to push on. Amen. I think of when I played basketball in our, in our high school and Mr. Dotson was our coach there. And one of his tactics for in, in a game was to out-hustle the other team. And if we can out-endure them and out, out-run them and out-push them, and, and, and they start getting tired because we're, we're just pushing, we're just pushing, pushing, we're enduring. You know, they begin to make foolish decisions. They begin to slow down. Their shots don't begin to fall because we're out enduring them. But you know what? The devil isn't going to go away. He's going to keep on attacking. He's going to keep on pushing on. We can't just say, you know what? Oh, I, I give up because otherwise we're going to be defeated. We have to keep on enduring Amen. in this fight. But not only just to endure, but we have to finish the fight as Apostle Paul did. At the end of a boxing match or a basketball game or any sporting event, the game isn't over until the whistle is blown. That is the same way, spiritually speaking, we aren't done the fight that we are to be engaged in until our our last breath, until we, we see Christ, when Christ takes us home or when he comes back to this earth. We aren't finished the fight until it's over. Don't quit before the time is up. I don't know if you've ever seen some of the videos on YouTube. Sometimes they celebrated too early, and maybe there's a basketball game on. I think like five, I've seen some of those, like five seconds left, and they, the one guy makes an impossible shot, some three-point shot, and they're, they're, the team is all sudden up, and they are going crazy. There's only like a one or two seconds left. It's like, it's possible. The t- other team isn't going to make this. Somehow they get the ball in. They f- heave it and shoot another impossible shot, 
and as a team out there is one team celebrating, yeah, we won, and all of a sudden they look around and they see the other team all of a sudden is uh, roaring up, and, and th all of a sudden they realize that, wow, we just lost. You know, they celebrated too early. And that's the same way as Christians, you know what, we can't, we don't, we don't celebrate until, you know, sometimes as Christians we, we say, oh, you know what, I've, I've done my best, I've put in my years, and now it's time to coast. No, the time isn't, we aren't done fighting until our last breath. Amen. And that is exactly what Paul is saying. He's like, my, the time of my departure is at hand. He realized that his time was up, he was about to be home, and he said, you know what, I've fought a good fight. I've, all through these years, I've continued to fight the fight that the Lord wanted me to be involved in. But not only is there a fight, but there's also a course that we ought to finish. First of all, for qualifying for this course are those that you need to be saved and those that will be born again. And whether we like it or not, whether we realize it or not, if you are a child of God, God has a purpose, God has a plan, and God has a course and a race that each and every one of us ought to be involved in and engaged in. Are you running that course? Are you, are you actively following the course? For, each, for all of our lives, we have, there's maybe different paths the Lord has for us, but we realize one thing on this course is that we ought to be witnesses for Christ. We ought to be sharing the message of the truth, the gospel message to those that are around us, and we ought to be lights wherever the Lord may lead us, wherever the Lord may direct us, and we ought to shine as lights in the midst of this crooked and perverse nation. We see that in Philippians chapter 2, I believe, in verse 14, and talks about that as how we ought to be shining as lights. And we may not understand the course the Lord is bringing us through. We may not understand maybe some of the circumstances or the trials that we may be going through and facing, but we have to realize that if we're walking with the Lord and the Lord is directing us this way and he puts in a situation in our life like, Lord, why, why is this? I'm sure Apostle Paul went through this many times. Like, why am I in prison? Why am I being persecuted? Lord, I'm only serving you. I'm just doing what you want me to do. And we may not understand why we're going through what we're going through. But you know, if we're just following the Lord and say, Lord, where, what's the next step you want me to take? Where else do you want me to go? And I'm willing to do, I'm willing to go wherever you want me to go. We may not understand, but you know, we just need to follow the course and the path that God has planned for us. And we need to finish the course. The race isn't over until we cross that finish line. Don't pull up short on God's plan for your life. Too many Christians are pulling up short and they aren't finishing strong. They aren't finishing to the very end. Don't pull up short on the course that God has for you in your life. Thirdly, there's also a faith to be kept. We can't compromise on the faith, in, in our faith. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 says, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. You know, this world is going to try to cause us to compromise in our faith. And I think one of the most trying times, one most, the, when the world really bombards us is oftentimes when, if you just graduate from high school and you go out into the college, and this college, they have their agendas, they have their ideas, and they're trying to bombard um, college students with their philosophies and ideas, and this is what, the, this is what you ought to be thinking. And you know what, we can't compromise we should, we, as Christians, we must keep the faith. We must guard it. We must preserve it Amen. as Apostle Paul did. He said he looked back and said, I have kept the faith. I didn't compromise. I didn't um, pull up short for the sake of men. But no, this is what I believe in God. I, my faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is not going to change. And as we enter into 2017, we, if you compromise, hopefully you didn't compromise in 2016, but we cannot let our guard down. We must continue to be in God's book in order to be able to have a firm foundation on, of our faith. We see in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 10, it says, For Demoth has forsaken me, having this loved this present world, and is departed unto the Thessalonians. And Demas forsook his faith. He said, you know, the world, this world has more to offer. And, 
you know, he went out after the world. But, you know, we need to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and to keep it and to preserve it. You see, Paul's faith was, faith was attacked time and time again, but yet he remained faithful. You know, it's no question that our faith will be attacked throughout this world. We will be scoffed, and it seems like the world's just getting worse and worse. And what, are we going to stand up for our faith, and we're going to preserve the faith that we have? And why do we do that? Why do we try to, why do we keep the faith? Why do we run the race that God has for us? Why do we fight this fight? Why, why put ourselves through this? Well, we see that in the last verse there in 2 Timothy chapter 4. In verse 8, it says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, but not unto me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. You know, we are to fight this fight. We are to run the race, and we are to keep the faith because we realize that there is a crown of righteousness that will be given to those that do that. And we aren't going to be able to keep all these things in our own power, but it's only through the grace of God. But we realize that it will be worth it all. It will be worth it all when we see Christ. It will be worth every trial, every difficulty. And when we can look back at our life and say, you know what, I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I've... I've, I've run the course, and I've kept the faith. You know, it will be worth it all. There is a crown of righteousness for each and every one of us if we do these things. And as we enter into 2017, what does fighting the fight look like to you? What areas are you maybe struggling in? What areas do you need to grow spiritually and say, you know what, I keep being defeated in this area, maybe of area of sin or area of weakness or you aren't fully surrendered to the Lord. What areas, as you plan, maybe you make your new year resolutions, you know, it's easy for us to say, you know what, I want to I do this, I want to buy a house, I want this and that, and I have all these other goals. But yet, spiritually speaking, how do you want to grow in 2017? And you want to break it down. You know, other goals we may break it down and say, we can't just say, you know, I want to fight a good fight of faith. What does that look like to you? How can you, how do you need to be better engaged in the fight? Do you need to realize that there is a fight? Are you engaged in it? Are you enduring? What areas in your life do you need um, to be able to better fight that fight? And what course is, does the Lord have for you in 2017? Are you following the Lord's leadership? Are you walking with the Lord and fellowshipping with the Lord? That's the only way we're going to understand and know where the Lord is leading and directing. Do you have that close relationship with the Lord? And are you keeping the, the faith in 2017? You know, we may accomplish some great financial gains or some physical gains or whatever it is, but it is complete waste if we're not being effective in the fight and the course and keeping the faith in 2017. For me, I want to look back on my life and be able to say, as Paul said, I've kept the faith, I fought a good fight, I finished the course, my course, and I have kept the faith. And I hope that that is your same desire. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Holy Father, thank you for today. Lord, I thank you that you have given us a new year. Lord, thank you for this 2017, another year that we hopefully can, will serve you would have a life that is dedicated to you, Lord, that we may go out and fight and serve you with a life that is honoring to you. And as we make New Year's resolutions, Lord, I pray that we, it's easy for us to be able to look at all the physical things, but Lord, how spiritually can we grow in this new year? Lord, I pray that we would be like the Apostle Paul, that we would fight a good fight, that we would finish the course and we would keep the faith. Pray just be with us today and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.